Hi, I'm Lisa M. Hunsberger, and in this presentation, we will take an anthropological look at Jamaica and see how its inhabitants influenced its culture. First, I'll give a short background with general information about Jamaica. Next, I'll talk about the inhabitants of Jamaica and how our people, languages, music, fashion, religions, and food were influenced by them. Let's start with the background. Jamaica is a small tropical island. It's about the size of Gifu Prefecture in Japan. The capital is Kingston, my hometown. Jamaica is located in the Caribbean. Our closest neighbors are Cuba and Haiti. The Caribbean is very close to North America, Central America, and South America. Jamaica and Japan are very far. It takes about 18 hours by plane. There are no direct flights, so first we have to travel to North America and then to Japan. I came from Kingston to Fukuoka eight years ago. Jamaica is famous for its beautiful beaches, waterfalls, rivers, fun activities, singers and music, our athletes, our food, beautiful nature, and more. Jamaica has a lot of mountains and hills. The most famous are the Blue Mountains. They are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is where Blue Mountain coffee comes from. This is the Jamaican flag. It has three colors. Black represents the creativity and strength of our people. Green represents nature and gold represents the bright sunshine. Now let's learn about the different inhabitants of Jamaica. The first people to discover Jamaica were probably the Tainos, one of the oldest people to live in the Caribbean. They came to Jamaica around 800 CE, and they named the island Zaymaka. It means land of wood and water. Christopher Columbus later came to the island in 1494, and he named it Santiago. The Spanish enslaved the majority of the Tainos. A few were able to hide in the mountains, but many of the enslaved Tainos died from overwork and European diseases. So the Spanish brought enslaved Africans to the island to work. In 1655, the British fought and took the island from the Spanish. They renamed it using the old Taino name, but changed the spelling and pronunciation. During this time, many enslaved Africans escaped into the mountains. They joined the other Africans who had escaped from the Spanish. Their descendants still live there today. They are called the Maroons. One very famous Maroon is Nanny of the Maroons. She was a strong warrior, and she helped to free many of the enslaved Africans. She's one of our national heroes, and her face is on our $500 bill. When slavery ended in 1834, workers from India, and China were brought to Jamaica to work. The image of Jamaica is that we are a country of only black people, but Jamaica has other races too. There are about 2.7 million people living in Jamaica. 91% of our population is black. 6.1% is mixed. Although many Jamaicans who are mixed with black and have black features, often just say that they are black. They identify as black. 1% of our population is other races, including Chinese Jamaicans and white Jamaicans. And 0.8% are Indian Jamaicans. If you ask a Jamaican who they are, they probably wouldn't say I'm Indian Jamaican or I'm Afro Jamaican. They probably just say I'm Jamaican. Our motto is out of many, one people. It means that although there are different races in Jamaica, and, al and although we came from different inhabitants, 
we are all Jamaicans. This is our coat of arms. It's a kind of crest and it's one of our national symbols. It has our motto on it and we can see two Taino people on it as well. Jamaica has two languages, English and Jamaican. English is the language of education and all Jamaicans start to study English from elementary school. Jamaican isn't taught in schools, unfortunately, but it is the native language of many Jamaicans. It is a mix of English and the languages of the enslaved Africans. The Jamaican language is a big part of our culture and our national identity. You can hear it in movies and in our music. Jamaica has two main genres of music, dancehall and reggae. Dancehall is very high energy. There's a lot of dancing and it's very sexy. In fact, American hip hop and rap are said to be born from Jamaican dancehall music. Dancehall music comes from reggae music. Reggae music is slower and the songs usually have an uplifting message. It has been designated an intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. Dancehall and reggae artists use a mix of our two languages in their songs, but most dancehall songs tend to be in Jamaican alone. The fashion of reggae and dancehall are very different. Dancehall is very colorful and dancehall artists have a very edgy, modern look. Reggae artists tend to be more conservative with their fashion. Women generally wear natural hairstyles like locks and afros, and the fashion, music, style, and lyrics of reggae music are heavily influenced by Rastafarianism. Rastafarianism is one of the more famous religions in Jamaica. It originated in Jamaica in the 1930s, during a time that was very difficult for Black Jamaicans racially and politically. The Rastafarian message is a strong one that centers around the mental and spiritual upliftment of Black people. To Rastafarians, Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia is the Messiah the Bible spoke about. Their name, Rastafarian, comes from the Emperor's name before his coronation. He was Ras Tafari. Tafari is his name, his first name, and Ras means Prince in Amharic, the language of Ethiopia. About 1% of Jamaicans are Rastafarian. The other religions in Jamaica are Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, and Buddhism. These religions came to Jamaica thanks to our different inhabitants. And about 21.3% of Jamaicans are non-religious. Jamaican food was also influenced by our inhabitants. We eat meals with rice, beans, meat, and vegetables, and our dishes are very flavorful. We also eat a lot of fruits. Unlike in Japan, we don't eat rice and drink soup for breakfast. Those are for lunch and dinner. For breakfast, we usually eat vegetables, dumplings, meat, fruits, and or porridge. Jamaica is a tropical island, so we eat a lot of fruits and vegetables every day. Many of the fruits and vegetables in Jamaica came from Asia and Africa a long time ago. Our national fruit is aki. Aki comes from West Africa. It's a strange looking fruit and it's poisonous. Kind of like Japanese fugu, blowfish. However, we don't need a special chef to prepare aki. Every Jamaican knows how to prepare aki. Because of our history, the majority of Jamaican dishes were influenced by our inhabitants and our food have lots of delicious flavors and spices. So this has brought me to the end of my presentation. I hope you learned a lot of really interesting information today about my country. And I hope that maybe one day you'll be able to visit Jamaica. Thank you for taking an anthropological look at Jamaica with me.